Hello fellow 3D enthusiast. Today I'm going to share with you how you can make this procedural water material. And it's pretty simple. And then after I show you just the simple method on just its own shader, we're going to hop into a more complex scene. As you can see, there's some more complex nodes going on here. And I'll show you how you can add water droplets to any material even if you've already got something pretty crazy and complex going on. As you can see here, this is actually a render I'm working on. It's for a course that I have coming up. And if you're interested in learning more about this, I would recommend joining my email list. And if you do go ahead and decide to join that list, I've got this special gift for you. It's a completely free Hydraulic Kitbash Elements Pack. And so if you join that list down the road, you'll probably get updates about this course. I think it might be dropping around next week, and if you're on the list, you'll have some really nice discounts. Anyways, back to starting with our simple scene. I'm just going to break down these nodes for you and show you what's going on. So first of all, we're starting with a moose grave texture. So to add in one of these, you can hit Shift A, Texture, and Moose Grave Texture. And you can see by default the scale is 5, and so I'm just going to crank that up to 31. And I'm going to turn down the detail to 1. Everything else is just default. And with this, I'm just running that through a color ramp, which you can see here. And I'm also grabbing a noise texture and turning the scale up to around 7.5 and the detail down to about 0.44. And this color ramp isn't actually doing anything, but after the color ramp, I'm running it through a subtract node, which you can see has the effect of taking away a whole bunch of the whiteness and that sort of breaks up the texture and makes it look a little bit more randomized. And by the way, you can find the subtract node by hitting Shift A, Color, Mix RGB. And once you get this node, you can hit Mix and just switch that to Subtract. So we're subtracting this from this, and we get this. And I go ahead and actually I do that one more time. And you can see when we make that switch, there it's even dimmer, and once we do that, it's starting to look a little bit more like raindrops. I pretty much have the same setup here. This noise texture is actually quite a bit smaller than this one, or bigger depending on how you look at it. The noise pattern looks a little bigger. And this one actually is running through the color ramp. I've just cranked up the black values a little bit there, and then I subtract it once more, and like I mentioned, it gets to be quite a bit less. Now from this subtract node, it's actually pretty important to have this clamp value turned on or else you run into problems later down the road. But from here, I'm running this through a invert node so that it's mostly white with some black dots. And I'm running that right into the roughness of our principal shader here. I'm also running this side through a bump node, which you can find by going to vector and bump. And also you can find invert by going to Shift A, Color, and Invert. And so my subtract is going into the bump height, and I've got that at about a strength of 0.35. I run that normal into the normal of our principled shader, and once we look at that, you can see we've got raindrops. Now I mentioned the clamp value is pretty important. If I uncheck that, you can see we get this crazy effect, which is pretty fun. You can go for that if you want to, but since we're making raindrops, I'm going to check that again. And that's the basics. Now if you stick around, I'll show you how you can add that into a bit more of a complicated shader. So if I hop over to the scene with the gun here, you can see I've got this pretty complex shader for this handle here. And I'm going to go ahead and make that node tree once more, and I'm going to plug it in. And I'll show you the specifics of how you can plug it into something that you've already got going on. So one thing that you'd probably want to consider when you're adding in water drops to another material is that sometimes the objects are a little bit more stretched. And as you can see here, I've got these water drops, but they're looking a little bit stretched, like I mentioned. So I actually have a texture coordinate and a mapping node here, which I'm going to duplicate. But if you have Node Wrangler, you can just actually hit Control-T, and that will add them in automatically, and that's pretty fast. 
So to fix this stretching, I'm going to hit scale and multiply that by about 4. And you can see all of our stretching problems have gone away. And I'm just going to plug this vector into all of the noise textures as well, just so that we don't mess up anything else. And those are looking pretty nice. So now I've pretty much just rebuilt what I told you about a few seconds ago with the other shader. And now I'm ready to plug this in to the main shader. And I just discovered something really cool. If you sort of want to rotate nodes, you can hit R with all of them selected, and they'll do this thing, which is pretty cool if you want to organize things in a certain way. Anyways, now we're going to focus on these two inputs here and work on mixing them in seamlessly. So I happen to have a mix node here, but if you don't, you can just go into color and once again, mix RGB. So let's do one thing at a time and start with the bottom node here. I'm just going to select this so that's out of the way and drop in my mix node and I'm going to switch that to an add. I'm just going to drop this into the bottom of the color and once we turn up the factor, that will add it into the bump. And you can see this strength is quite a bit stronger than what we were using in the other scene. So we're just going to add in a very little bit. And by a very little bit, I mean like a 0.1, maybe even less. And that will work pretty well with the bumps. And up here on the roughness value, I'm going to switch this to an add as well. And just add that in very slightly and see what happens. If you have a real close look here, it doesn't look terrible, but I feel like we could do a little bit better here. That doesn't do anything because the subtract is on 0.5. So I sort of wanted my raindrops to be a little bit more clumped up, and I found you can do that with this color ramp here. So those are all just some fine tweaks. If we zoom out, we can see it actually looks all right. And if your raindrops are looking too small for your liking, if you just go back to this Musgrave texture that started it all and turn down the scale a little bit, you can get bigger droplets, which I'd kind of like in this situation. A lot of the time, it's not a one-size-fits-all situation, so tweaking it can be pretty important. And in the end, a lot of it comes down to your personal preference and what you'd really like. In my opinion, this isn't overdoing it here, and it actually adds a little bit, so I think this is where I'd like it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Go nuts with the water droplets. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you got something good out of it. Once again, if you're interested in this gun creation course, hop onto my email list and I'll make sure you get the first updates about it. I think next week will be the launch week and there's going to be a pretty great sale going on. With that said, I'll catch you later in another tutorial. Cheers!